Okay, guys, here we go. George W. Bush. Remember, this is the Republican. If you're an Al Gore fan, you're like, Gore won the election. They went down to Florida. That's how close this election was. It was down within four or 500 votes in the entire country who was going to be president because whoever won Florida was going to win it. And they were double checking. They were checking to make sure the whole, they got punched more. It was not all computerized back then. Finally, the Supreme Court, which was more conservative court, said, you know what? Election's over. You cannot recount any longer. George W. Bush wins. So if you're an Al Gore fan, you're probably thinking he should have been president. If you're more conservative Republican, you're like, no, Bush is the president, okay? We had 9-11 when he was president not long after. Because of that, we went into Iraq and Afghanistan. We thought there were weapons of mass destruction in uh, Iraq. Saddam Hussein, remember his dad, let Saddam Hussein, uh, Bush's dad let Saddam Hussein stay in power. So in a way, this is his son finishing the job. I remember a, a buddy uh, of uh, Jasmine's uh, husband of, of, of childhood friend from Israel. We met them in Italy on vacation, and we were about to invade Iraq. And he said, you know, if you guys are about to go in into Iraq because you say that uh, Iraq has weapons of mass destruction, trust me. If Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, Israel would know about it. He worked in like the CIA. He was in their intelligence department. And I, I believe him. And of course, later on it came out, he was right. Iraq did not have weapons of mass destruction. So once again, the United States did get into a war under with false information. We have to be careful before we go into wars. Make sure the information is correct why we're fighting. He did not have weapons of mass destruction. We got into Afghanistan because the Taliban was helping Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, Al -Qaeda and bin Laden were responsible for the Twin Towers coming down at 9-11. The Patriot Act starts. Patriot Act basically took away our rights more and more, made it where you did not need a search warrant. You could check people's bank accounts. You could bug them so many times. It's the question, freedom or security? So after 9-11, basically we said, okay, government, that's all right. I'm so afraid of terrorists. It's okay if you check out people's bank accounts. It's okay if you put bugs in. We're just, we want to make sure no more terrorism happens. That's the Patriot Act. Okay, here's a quick one. Although his presidency began with one of the highest approval ratings in history, George W. Bush was a controversial leader whose time in office was marked with war, debt, and economic recession. George W. Bush is either the most overrated or underrated Hi. president in history. And it's kind of hey, buddy. Born in New Haven, Connecticut Sorry, on July 6, 1946. George W. Bush was the oldest child of George H. W. Bush, the 41st President of the United States. Bush is a third generation wealthy political family. His father, of course, was president. His grandfather was a senator. And he grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was a party animal in college. He kind of ducked and weaved when it came to the Vietnam War, serving in the National Guard. And he was someone with an alcohol problem. After earning an MBA from Harvard in 1975, Bush became a successful businessman and later defeated a long-term incumbent Democrat to become the governor of Texas in 1994. Well, Ann Riches was the first woman elected governor in Texas, and she was popular. And I think her re-election was assumed, but George W. Bush went on to win that race and it put him in position to enter the, the presidential race five years later. After declaring his run for the presidency, Bush rivaled Al Gore in a highly contested election in 2000 that ended with the Supreme Court the, envelope, please. the 43rd president of the United States. While George W. Bush did become president in 2000, we should remember that it was through one of the most controversial elections in U.S. history. 
It was the first time since 1888 that the popular vote and the electoral college vote did not match. Now it happens Eight all the time. After his election, terrorists attacked the United States on September 11th, causing Bush to respond with the war on terror in the Middle East. During his presidency, George Bush helped to lead the country through one of our darkest times, which was 9-11. However, George Bush will forever go down in history as the man who took this country to war, and it was a war over weapons of mass destruction, but no weapons of mass destruction were ever found. Although he won re-election in 2004, Bush's favorability rating fell due to high unemployment rates, the subprime there mortgage crisis, a multi-trillion dollar budget deficit, and his response to Hurricane Katrina. George W. Bush left office in January 2009. Okay. So that leads us to Obama. President Obama. Come on. Okay, it's kind of low, but you've already got the top stuff. So Obama becomes president. Once again, we go so much in politics. One way or the other way. One way or the other way, okay? So we got Democrat. So look, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat. President Kennedy was... What is this? All right, all right. Nope, nope, nope. So Obama becomes president. There's Obama. Obama's dad was from Kenya, which is in Africa. His mom was from Kansas. They met at the University of uh, Hawaii in Honolulu in a Russian studies class to speak Russian. And uh, he ended up going over to Harvard to go to Harvard. And his basically his wife... Uh, his wife, his mom, his mom brought him up. Uh, she met a guy in the Philippines. They moved to the Philippines and uh, President Obama lived in the Philippines for a few years uh, where she had another child with a Filipino man. And he was brought up by his grandparents quite a bit in California. So even when he wasn't with his mom, he still says, my mom loved me. She's the most special person in my life. If it wasn't for my mom, I would never be successful. So I think it was a great example of sometimes what a normal family is, is really a normal family now is, is more like Obama's. Maybe you live with this person, you live with your grandparents. So the fact is Obama Really, his mom died of cancer and he gave a great speech. Please go online on YouTube. Uh, uh, Obama's speech about his mother. It's from the book he wrote. And uh, Obama only saw his dad a few times in his whole life. Okay, so it's another thing. So many of these presidents have not had the best relationships with all of their parents. Look at, you know, if you look at the history, so many of them. So... Um, that's not that unusual if you know of anybody who's going through stuff like that. So Obama, president, dad from Kenya, met mom from Kansas, put something about how they met in a Russian studies class in Hawaii. He only saw his dad a few times. <coughs> Affirmative action helped him. Affirmative action is when uh, minority groups get a little extra special treatment. Affirmative means positive. So affirmative action, we already talked about that. Obama admits, hey, affirmative action helped me. I might not have gotten into Harvard if it wasn't for affirmative action. But once he got there, his professors said he was a brilliant student. He was the first uh, African-American guy to be in charge of the law review. Just to get a paper into the law review when you're in college and, you're, and when you're in law school, like my wife wrote a paper that was put in her law review for her, 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 her law school is amazingly hard. But for you to be president of the law review of your law school, you got you to gotta be top notch. So another thing that Obama, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, that's trying to get more universal health care where everybody has health care. The fact is America has always been the only developed country in the world. Mention any country that's developed 
and people basically have health care from cradle to the grave. When your baby born in the cradle until you die in the grave, the government's going to make sure you have some type of health insurance. America has been the only country, and now people are trying to get rid of Obamacare. Justin has plenty of friends, yoga instructors, and different people. They never really had health care until Obamacare. And it's cheaper, uh, uh, possible for them to get health care. And I have it be so, so expensive. So that's Obamacare. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see something about President Obama. And then we're almost done, guys. Because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. Barack Hussein Obama Jr., the 44th President of the United States of America, was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, on August 4, 1961. By the time Obama was two, his parents had separated. In 1966, his mother, Ann Dunham, remarried, and the family moved to Jakarta, Indonesia. He was a mixed-race kid, but in Hawaii, this was not unusual, and he wasn't out of place in Indonesia. At 10 years old, Obama moved back to Hawaii to live with his grandparents. He graduated oh, Hawaii, from Columbia not California. University Columbia, in New York City. He moved to Chicago, becoming a community organizer for low-income residents on the South Side. It was a good way for him to study power it, and how to use it. He was it also in Harvard. Obama was admitted to Harvard Law School go. in 1988. The following summer, during an internship at a Chicago law firm, he met Michelle Robinson. She was in charge of mentoring him. And Isn't that the interesting thing? He was probably making $25,000 a year trying to help uh, poor kids uh, you know, improve their reading scores and, and helping them get help in the south side of Chicago. She was on track to be a partner in a law firm, probably making who knows how much more money and she was mentoring him. So she's kind of, she's not the quiet type who's going to say yes, whatever you want, honey. He was immediately smitten and started asking her out for dates. In law school, Obama was the first African-American president of the Harvard Law Review. After graduation, he returned to Chicago to practice civil rights law, teach law school and organize get out the vote campaigns. Obama and Michelle married in 1992 and then had two daughters, Malia and Sasha. And it was during that period where he decided that to do what he wanted to do in life in terms of changing the world, he had to go into elective politics. In 1996, Obama won a seat in the Republican-controlled Illinois State Senate. Republicans remember him as a great pragmatist in the state legislature, a guy that they could work with. In 2000, Obama suffered his only political loss in a run for the U.S. House of Representatives. But in 2004, he ran for the U.S. Senate and gave a high-profile keynote speech at the Democratic National Convention. People sat up in their chairs and said, where did he come from? People loved his message. His message was, we're not red states and blue states, you know, we're purple. At that moment, people thought of Barack Obama as a presidential candidate in waiting. 18 months ago, y'all didn't know who I was. Obama won his Senate race by a large margin. In 2007, the freshman senator announced he was running for President of the United States. His main opponent in the Democratic primaries was Hillary Clinton. He won the nomination. The choice in this election is not between regions or religions or genders. It is about the past versus the future. In 2008, he won the general election, defeating Republican candidate John McCain. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. On January 20th, 2009, Obama was sworn in as the 44th President of the United States. Ten months later, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He did, in his remarks, point out that there are justifiable uses of force and he would not shrink from using them. The 30,000 additional troops that I'm announcing tonight will deploy in the first part of 2010. While dealing with the consequences of inheriting two wars and attempting to develop a strategy for bringing them to an end, Obama and the U.S. military were able to track down and kill Osama bin Laden. Obama also pushed through several major policies during his first term in office, including helping repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. He passed 
you know, health care with no Republican support. That means if support, you were gay in the military, no Republican support. you're not going to get kicked out. Court. Don't ask, don't tell. Obama also began his presidency in the midst of the worst economic crisis 2008 recession since the Great Depression. Despite bailouts for the auto and banking industries, the financial crisis on Wall Street led to record housing foreclosures. The national debt passed $16 trillion. Unemployment also remained high during his first term in office. The hole the recession left was huge, and progress has been painfully slow. Republicans nominated former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney to run against Obama in the 2012 presidential election. Real, achievable plans that will lead to new jobs, more opportunity, and rebuild this economy on a stronger foundation. That's what we can do in the next four years, and that is why I'm running for a second term as President of the United States. People like to have a job. Some of you guys might be going through a problem with that now, unfortunately. We've got more unemployment since, haven't had this much since the Great Depression. Okay, so that was a big one too with Obama. In 2008, there was the housing, let me make sure this is, there we go. The housing market collapsed. So many people lost their homes. You lose your home, lose your job. Can't. So he had to deal with that right when he became president. Okay, President Trump, once again, we got the pendulum again. Democrat, Republican, Republican, Democrat. Trump got elected as a Republican. 2017 to now, once again, just like with Jimmy Carter after Watergate, he was elected as an outsider. People liked him because he wasn't a politician from Washington, D.C. for decades and decades. A lot like Ronald Reagan, he had lots of tax cuts and military spending ups, which leads to a deficit, obviously. If you're going to have less taxes coming in and you're going to spend more money, Probably going to have a deficit. I think our deficit now is $23 trillion. Like I said before, it's probably going to be $25, $26 trillion after bailing out, you know, helping people and everything with this because of the uh, economic crisis we're going through now. Uh, like Ronald Reagan, he was also a television star. He was in The Apprentice where he was famous for saying, you're fired. So a celebrity. He was elected because he was a celebrity. Okay, so there's Donald Trump, and let's see a little something about him. Here we go. We will never, ever sign bad trade deals. America first again. America See, this is nationalism. Remember nationalism. America first, that's very nationalistic. We're going we're gonna to focus on ourselves. We're going to focus on America. We're going to make America great again. Not think about the rest of the world as much. That's nationalism. America first. TV personality. Born in Queens, Jamaica, Queens. Wharton School, Pennsylvania, studied economics, a great business school. There's his father, successful developer, civil rights lawsuit for discriminating against African Americans who be tenants. They settled the case out of court. High-profile projects like t the Trump Tower, hotel industry, there's Giuliani, casinos, his casinos failed, they didn't do well, Tony Schwartz, a writer, best-selling autobiography, Trump, The Art of the Deal, I remember Jasmine reading it. Bankruptcies in the 1990s. 
And then the apprentice got him back on top. Flirt with politics, 2011. He got famous for accusing Obama of not being an American. A lot of people liked that Trump was doing that. They were suspicious because of jihad there, meaning, oh, he's a Muslim. So a lot of people kind of fell for that, even though obviously Obama has a birth certificate. Presidency. Shifting immigration, obviously. We will build a wall. And remember, that's part of nationalism again. Okay? The fact is, with, with climate change and people leaving their homes because they can't live in places around the world, we've talked about this before, right? There's going to be more and more countries closing their borders because of climate change. People can't stay where they're at because their place has got no food or their place is, is burning or their place is too hot to live anymore. They're going to be trying to move to other places. So more and more countries are starting to become nationalistic and saying, we don't want you. We don't want immigrants. And Trump was there. People backed that idea. Enough people to get elected. Remember, Hillary got the most votes, but Trump got the Electoral College. Massive protest. Opposition. Okay. So, there we go, guys. One last time. Abby, Angelina, Alex, Ruby, Damien, Lamaya, Augie, Iris, Joni, Ty, Mary, Noah, Riley, Michaela, and Grace. Wonderful people with wonderful attitudes. Thank you so much for the great year. I mean, this has been a weird year the last couple of months, but when I look back at this year, I'm going to think of it as a great year. You guys were some of the, the best, one of the best classes I've ever taught. Abilene, Kelly, Angelina, Alexander, Ari, and Brody, D, Hudson, Jack B, Jack L, James, Jefferson, Maxine, Nicholas, Oscar, Sarah W, Raphael, Sarah, and Zylia, and Lupe. Wonderful students with wonderful attitudes. Thank you so much. Great, great year. Ada, Arelli, Ben, Cal, Che, Dylan, Ethan, Frederick, Jose, Haley, Isabella, Kelly, Maddie, Rachel, Roberto, Sophia W, Sophia M, Sophia O, Tanya, and Tyson. Thank you so much. You guys were amazing class. And I think you got the record for the basketball. Sorry, Raphael, I think they got it. Or was it you guys? <laughs> it was between third and fourth period. One of you guys were up like 51. I forget which one. Wait, 44. I think it might have been fourth period. Great job, guys. Allie, Annabelle, Ava, Bo, Delilah, Ethan, Virginia, Grace, Jasper, Maria, Linus, Reese, Sean, Thomas, and Griffin. Wonderful students with wonderful attitudes. Thanks so much, guys. I love teaching you, eighth period, great, great memories. And the last period, ninth period, Cam, Chloe, Audrey, Becca, Daniel, G, Jackson, Jake, Adeline, Josh, Logan G, Logan S, Nash, Nick, 
Ayana, Zay, and Kylie. Last period of the day. Wonderful kids. I could go home with a smile, like Mr. Dornan said. What a 